For as long as I can remember, I have been utterly intrigued and fascinated by abandoned places and structures, especially the towns of Chernobyl and Pripyat. I'll never forget the first time I learned of the Chernobyl disaster. I knew at that time I had to and was absolutely going to visit someday. On most abandoned crawls, you are likely presented with some kind of risk. Your stomach drops as you feel the damp wooden floorboards sink a little as you take a step, hoping it won't collapse beneath you. You trip over a brick on the floor, your hand landing inches from what seems like the sharpest piece of broken glass you've ever seen. Your heart pounds as you peer around a corner into a room darker than the night and hope someone isn't hiding inside. Chernobyl presents itself with a different kind of danger, one that sets it apart from anywhere in the world, a lethal but invisible danger. In this series, I will be taking you deep inside one of the most radioactive areas of the world, the Exclusion Zone, through the town of Chernobyl, up close to reactor number four, and finally, exploring the infamous and entirely abandoned town of Pripyat. Before we get into the exploration, we will talk about what the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was, how it happened, and who was affected. Let's begin. In the early morning hours of April 26, 1986, the overnight staff inside reactor number four were performing a test on a backup cooling system to prove it would be sufficient enough if there was a loss of power to the main backup cooling system. A power surge occurred and the water in the cooling system began to boil, which further pressurized the core. The workers attempted to execute an emergency shutdown, but that caused another spike in heat and pressure. Reactor 4 exploded, launching a radioactive plume 400 times the size of the Hiroshima plume into the atmosphere, blanketing primarily Belarus, Ukraine, and the Soviet Union, but eventually reaching Scandinavia and the rest of Europe. Two people died at the scene, However, 30 firemen died within the weeks and months following due to acute radiation poisoning. It is expected that up to 2,000 people have or will die due to radiation exposure from this event. Following the event, two exclusion zones around the power plant were established, the 10-kilometer zone and the 30-kilometer zone. Inside the 10-kilometer zone lies the town of Pripyat which inhabited almost 50,000, most being employees of the power plant and their families. Everyone was ordered to evacuate within 36 hours. Within the 30-kilometer zone lies the town of Chernobyl, a smaller town which inhabited around 15,000. It was evacuated as well. Residents of both towns were told they could return, so many didn't bring their belongings. Over 300,000 people were displaced in Ukraine and Belarus. Now, onto what you're actually here to see, that being the tour itself. We began by entering the first checkpoint on the outer part of the exclusion zone. You may be curious about how we were able to enter the exclusion zones in the first place and not get dangerous amounts of radiation poisoning. Throughout the whole tour, we were exposed to roughly 10 microseverets, which is comparable to the exposure you'd face on an overseas flight. The outer exclusion zone is primarily contaminated with cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years. Since then, not only has a half-life period elapsed, but much of the area has been cleaned. 3,000 people still work in the zone and live there a limited amount of time before their exposure limit is up. The ground where the new concrete is not covering is still dangerous. We drove into the town of Chernobyl, where 500 people still reside, most being older people who moved back once the area was deemed quote-unquote safe. There are three shops, some dormitories where the workers reside, a cafeteria where the workers eat, 
a fire station, and a couple monuments as you saw before. Here are the shops, and this is the cafeteria. The next building is where the engineers responsible for the event were tried and later sentenced to 10 years in jail. One monument statue of Vladimir Lenin in particular is quite special because it is the only remaining communist statue left in Ukraine after the fall of the Soviet Union. That wraps up part one of the Chernobyl series. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. In the next part, we will dive deep inside the 10 kilometer exclusion zone, see reactor four up close, and do some exploring in an abandoned structure.